need to kind of start over. So, okay, palpating, there's tension on the right lumbar to lower thoracic. And same on the left side, not as much as the right side, okay? Let's see here. So, okay, see, the knees a little bit apart. The fact that the knee keeps them close together already makes me wonder about the pelvic floor, right? Protection response, perfectly normal, perfectly good idea if you have a compensation. All right, let's have you bring both feet together. All right, that's good. All right, face up. And let's bring your knees and hips 90 degrees. Hips and knees 90 degrees, all the way up, all the way up. Good. That's no difficult, huh? Like a chair. And let's have you pull your feet together again. Oh, there we are. Okay, face down. Got a positive test. Motor control is now saying, how do I do that? I didn't get the results I expected. While motor learning is active, I'm going to quickly release this tension in the lower back region here. It's erector spinae tension. All right, and face up again. Hips and knees 90 degrees. It even does that easier. Bring your feet together, and we have a negative test. Motor control is using the erector spinae tension here in the lumbar to lower thoracic region to compensate for pelvic floor function. Okay. As was proven when I released and retested, and we got a stronger response. So motor control now realizes that it does not need to initiate or compensate with the back muscles here in order to operate the pelvic floor. Now what I notice is the second time I asked Anne to bring her legs up, hips and knees 90 degrees, she was much more willing to do it on her own without me assisting, right? Which indicated that motor control already understood that it was on the way to resolving this and it was eager to get, to get through the process, right? So it's really cool in treatment. What happens after a while, a lot of times, is that I start to see indications that motor control is helping Motor control is realizing, hey, I'm finally getting some input that I need. And so, yeah, while you're there, hey, let's work on this. And it really starts taking an active participation in the process. It's really cool to watch. We just saw a little bit of it here. Motor control brought the lights up much more willingly because it said, yeah, let's finish this piece in the process. Okay. So, moving along, let's do the straight leg. All right, let's have you pull your legs together. Good, relax. All right, and I'm going to manually, immediately rotate the hips a little bit. Bring your legs together again, and there it is. Okay, face down. When I, man when I medially rotated the hips, I lengthened the lateral rotators, right? People can recruit the piriformis to assist the pelvic floor. Piriformis being a very close next door neighbor to the obturator internus, obturator internus with the direct link to the pelvic floor. And face up again. So you kind of have to approach the strengthening the pelvic floor through inference. And pull your feet together again. All right, so this time again, I internally rotated the lower legs on purpose to see if motor control really got that it can keep longer piriformis muscles while maintaining a stable pelvic floor. 